All of my friends have plants, and honestly, I don't get it. So to figure it out, I hired a plant tutor to teach me how to be a plant parent. Yeah. Thank you to Blinkist for sponsoring today's video. Plants. House plants to be specific. Yeah, we got some really interesting topics coming up. <laughs> but listen, I've grown up in a house with a bunch of plants. I always thought that plants were kind of like a weird mom thing. But then I learned that all of my friends have plants. Look at these nerds. So I see that people really care about their plants. Like to the point they treat them like people or pets kind of. And honestly, I don't get it. It's just a little hard for me to wrap my mind around. In this video, we're gonna figure out just why people seem to treat their plants like pets. I think it's time to hit the books. So I did a bit of reading to figure out why we've created this interesting relationship with plants. And I stumbled across some peculiar books, to say the least. But I also found some fascinating insights into this plant phenomena. And on top of reading about plants, I wanted to create this relationship for myself. So I found someone to tutor me in owning a plant so I don't kill it. My name's Anita. I love plants. I'm also a plant shop owner. Uh, my plant shop's called Sienna Flora. If this was plant expertise, mm -hmm. this is an expert and this is not an expert, I'm right here. <laughs> right, right. Do you have like a, like a couple plants that you would recommend? Oh my God. Succulents? Like what would you recommend? Oh yeah, 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 for sure. I would say that some easier, more, you know, tolerant to neglect plants would be the cacti and succulents, but there's beautiful, big plants too, right? Which are so architectural and just so beautiful and sure they won't fit everybody's, you know, interior design, mm -hmm. but there's Bird of Paradise, one of my absolute favorite plants. And you can get tiny little ones and then you can get ones that are like eight feet tall. So okay. whatever fits your space. I've got my plants. I'm back home. Show you, I got three plants. I got this plant. Cannot have ruined this already. I just got this plant. And I got this one. I just want to say thank you to Anita for helping me start my plant journey. And also David, the owner of Promise Supply, who helped me navigate the shop. The shop is really beautiful. It's in Toronto if you want to check it out. Also, Anita is opening a plant store very soon. It's called Sienna Flora. But both of these plant shops are in Toronto and both of these people are so, so lovely. Thank you to the both of you for helping me start my plant parenthood journey. Well, actually, hold up. I have a plant back here, right? This is a fake plant, purely for decoration. It still has a tag on it. It's a plastic plant. And I've got this real plant here. Don't get me wrong, I think these plants are really beautiful, but honestly, I don't see them as anything more than just plants. So I think I'm gonna need to rely on research to understand how and why people treat their house plants like pets. Humanity has a long history of cultivating plants for food, for medicine, and for the plant itself. Now the reasons behind the practice have shifted across time and culture. Ancient Romans used them as a status symbol. The birth of the bonsai in China was an expression of cultural values. And now we're seeing an indoor houseplant boom that's comparable to a familiar relationship, pets. The psychologist Dr. Boris Levinson was an advocate for animal-assisted therapy. He believed that pets served to reconnect humanity with nature. He saw the relationship as a two-way street. Humans supplied the pets' material needs, while pets satisfied the humans' psychological needs for stability, comfort, and relief without fear of judgment. Obviously, houseplants rely on humans to survive. But can a potted plant really meet our psychological needs? Surprisingly, Yes. There's a big body of research that's found that greenery improves moods and mental health. But why are plants becoming the new pet? Cats and dogs still exist. Well, it might be the result of the changing lifestyles in younger generations, from intentionally opposing historical norms to the unavoidable consequences of our modern society, where responsible pet ownership can be financially inaccessible and green spaces aren't as available in an increasingly urban world. Naturally, houseplants become an appealing and accessible alternative. So that's why it happens. You know, I still don't really get it personally, but I think it's time for me to start my plant parenthood journey, if you will. And like all parents, 
I want to document my plants very first steps. So I'm going to make a scrapbook for my plants. Yep. 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 Got a snake plant, a bird of paradise, and a Oh man, I forget the name of the other plant. I'm gonna have to Google it and just hope that I get and find the care instructions for it, so. Let's just make sure we keep them alive. That's the goal here, that's the real goal. This is my little scrapbook for my plants. Watering my plant. You don't need to constantly watch the watering. You can go a couple of weeks and it'll be fine. Sometimes the, I need water and you've given me too much water. Sometimes it could look almost the same. I think I overwatered it. <laughs> That's not supposed to happen. Oh, she's dripping. Oh, okay, she's dripping. Okay, okay. This one got a little tear. No, you see that? Now that I've watered it. Now what? I think it's really important to also like watch the soil. Is it like a touch thing that you gotta do? Exactly. Yeah, there's all kinds of meters and gadgets that you can purchase for that. I personally, I just check it with my finger. I feel like as a plant beginner, I should have just got one plant to take care of. Instead we got triplets. Triplets, three plants. If you don't have it in the right light, if you're not watering it correctly, it could die and that's a huge loss. As a proud plant parent, it's pretty natural to want to, you know, share things on social media and show your friends. So I'm gonna call Sabrina and show her my plants. <laughs> Pick up the phone. <laughs> I'll give you a little plant tour. Are you ready? I uh, I think I overwatered this one. Okay, and then I got this one. I think you know what this one is. I think we have matching plants. Just smile. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I, I found like a hole. Do you see this little hole here? I don't know how to fix it. I just sprayed it with water and like, I'm hoping for the best. I honestly didn't think that I would want to take care of them. I just feel like a moral obligation to make sure that they don't die. I'll talk to you soon. Now, bye. Dang, I look like my friends at the beginning of the video. <laughs> it's late. I just finished making my plant scrapbook. My plants first days in my home. Yeah, made some little plant memories. This is absolutely ridiculous. So I started out this journey just trying to understand other people's perspectives and try to figure out why some people may have this really close relationship with their plants to the point where they name them and baby them and all that stuff. Well, personally, I don't see that with my plants. I mean, it's only been five days. I do feel this moral obligation to make sure that they don't die and that I just take care of them. I don't know, they're kind of beautiful and I do want to see them grow and everything. Maybe I'm getting a little attached to my plants. I don't know, I think it's a little too early to say. But you know what plants do bring? Get that plant serotonin. That's not a real thing. I'm gonna need a scientist to fact check me on that. The gist here, plant serotonin, bueno. They are bringing some joy. I will admit that. Make sure you water your plants. Don't let them get dry. Check the soil. Don't be scared. Buy plants that you can take care of. I think that's it. I need to go to sleep. Thank you for watching this far. Keep watching though, because I'm still not done with my nonsense. Uh. Oh, hello there. I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, stick around because we're thanking Blinkist for sponsoring today's video. I was actually just listening to an audio book while I was on my afternoon walk. Honestly, I love Blinkist. And I've actually been using it for research on all of my videos for the past year. Basically what Blinkist does is they take top nonfiction books and condense them into 15 minute text and audio explainers. So you can basically understand the key insights from whole books in little to no time. And you know why I love it? I'm not Sabrina, okay? I do not have time to read a 400 page book on olive oil for a video. There are thousands of books on Blinkist in 27 different categories. You can learn about things in philosophy, politics, personal growth. When I first started researching for this video, I skimmed this book called The Botany of Desire by Michael Pollan, and it's about humans' relationship with plants. It was very interesting to say the least. But also, there's things on the bestsellers list, like Sapiens, oh my goodness. I have been wanting to read this book for a very long time, but that book is very thick and so I can just get the key insights from the book. Great stuff. There's this new feature called Shortcasts. So Blinkist has teamed up with some podcast creators, so basically you can get to the heart of a podcast in minutes. Blinkist is all about trying to get you the information fast, you know? In one year, 
not out the other, but just in your ear, in your head. The first 100 people to click the link to go to Blinkist.com forward slash Answer in Progress will get a full week for free plus 25% off your annual membership. And also you can cancel at any time during that one week free trial. Great stuff, get reading, get Blinkisting. And the sun is disappearing on me now, so I should probably be going back home. Thank you for watching, see you soon. Uh, yeah, I really need some after bite. Ah, it's so itchy! <laughs> okay, bye.